So you're going to when you if there's somebody that can be that can reach a lot of stuff, it's going to it's going to have to have a larger finish time than them, so it will be considered first. And you you won't if there were an edge that originally led here and now leads out of here, then you would have considered the uh, the uh, the connected stuff in the connected component here first. So you still wouldn't be able to leave. So this we're going to deal with first. Now next, um, before you could go from C and D to F and G. So that meant that if F and G, if you had uh, that C and the stuff in this connected component has to have a larger finish time than, than here, right? Why? Because if you started DFS here, then you can't get here. And that means you do this part afterwards and the finish time here are bigger. Suppose you, so if you started DFS here first, then you're going to, then it'll finish, and you'll do a DFS here next, and the finish times are larger. Suppose you start a DFS here first, then you'll reach here and deal with this connecting component and come back, and the finish times for somebody in here will still be larger. Ah, uh, reset. So that means if you could originally go from C and D to F and G, somebody in here will have a larger finish time. So we're going to take this. Every now, because these had a larger finish time, we can't go from here to here, so we're going to finish with this one. You're stuck in this connected component. Okay? And then, so, so the property is, if originally you have a, a, a connected component and you have sort of edges leading in and out, then the stuff leading the, 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 the connected components that are leading in, they have to, somebody in this connected component, if this is a connected component, this is a connected component, these are connected components. If it looks like this originally, then if you could get from here to here, somebody in here has to have a larger finish time than anybody in here. So that means that when you take the transpose and reverse all the edges, you're going to deal with this, one, this connected component first, so you can't go back to it, so you can't get out. And now all of these things that were out edges are now in edges, so when you, when you choose, when you start a DFS in this connected component, you can't get out. So it will explore the whole connected component because you can everything from anywhere in the connected component you can re reach anywhere else, and that holds true when you take the trend, when you reverse the edges. So you're going to see everybody here and nobody else because you can't go back to a, a previous connected component that you've explored. So this algorithm works, and it will be explained in the lecture notes, and we have to get on to um, Dijkstra's algorithm. Questions? Okay, and I should remember to find some applications. There are applications of this. They're in the book, but I didn't read the applications. I just read the proof. Um, okay, I think this proof is easier than the proof in the book. I would take the whole lecture. Okay. So that's... Uh, Topological sort. I'm sorry, that's um, applications of depth first search. Now we're going to consider sort of an application of breadth first search, which is Dijkstra's algorithm, which is finding a single source shortest path with, um, so this is single source. Shortest path with non negative edge weights. And I think this runs in all of V plus E time. Yeah. This is all of V plus E. 
Okay, so this is usually n and this is usually m. So it's the number of vertices plus the number of edges, I think. Um, okay, so in the next classes we're going to see all pairs, shortest paths. So this is sort of finding the shortest path between any pair of vertices and, um, and also how to deal with negative edge weights. So in the, proof of, in the proof of correctness, which I hope we'll have time for today, we're going to see why Dijkstra's breaks down if there are negative edge weights, because we're going to need that assumption to prove, to prove it correct. You can deal with negative edge weights. Um, Floyd Bellman Ford, Floyd Bushel, I'll have to, I get these mixed up. Okay. And um, there are algorithms, even if you have non-negative edge weights, there are algorithms for finding all pairs, shortest paths that are faster than running just Dijkstra's from every vertex. Okay. Um, Is this recorded? So um, remember, you implement a depth-first search with a stack. You implement a breadth-first search with a queue. Dijkstra's is sort of a breadth-first search, but you use a priority queue. Okay. So what are people in previous years? People mix up um, finding a single source shortest paths algorithm. The problem of finding single source shortest paths with the problem of finding a minimum spanning tree. Remember, um, we, we said in, um, when we were designing the minimum spanning tree, the example is, ooh, you're, you're, a county, you're a town county planner, and you're trying to figure out how to pave the roads to, to connect everything up, and you want to spend the, the least amount of money because you're a good county planner. Now imagine that you're a corrupt county planner, and you live in one of the towns, and you just want to pave the roads such that you can get wherever you want to go as fast as possible. Um, and, and you don't care how much money you spend. You just want to get from, you want to, know, you want to get from where you live to wherever. And you don't care about other people, right? Now, this is going to be a treat because um, you're, you're still not going to have a, a, a cycle because if the um, if the shortest path if you live at A and the shortest path to B is like this and the shortest path it's uh, if you if you had a cycle you you live at A and then there's a cycle right then it, so this is B and this is C and this is D well if if you've got a cycle, it means that um, that you sort of you've got two ways of getting to C. Well, one of these, either they're tied, in which case you can forget one of them, or one of them is is. Cheap. But why do you why would you have this edge to C if the cheapest way to to C is to go from A is to go like this? So it's still a tree. In general, like you can assume it's a tree. So. It's still going to connect the graph. It's still going to be a spanning tree, but the cost to the taxpayers is not guaranteed to be minimal. All you care about in this problem is you want to be able to get from A to any other point as quickly as possible. So, um, that's why it's uh, 17 minutes. Okay, so what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to cheat and uh, yeah. See, I'm just going to take the, um, oops, this is, is this the example for Dijkstra's blah, 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 I'm just going to take it anyway, I need an, I need an example graph. And I need it quickly.
kind of a Okay, so this is S U V X Y. Okay, so normally you you do a BFS with a Q, you do Dijkstra's with a priority Q. Um, so what do you do? You, 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 so S is where you live. You, the corrupt county planner. And these are the distances of the roads, the, the time it takes to cross the road. And now, um, so this is, okay, so now, oh, actually, maybe this is not going to, yeah, in the case of an under in the, in the case of an undirected graph, you get a tree and everything is connected. In the case of a directed graph, you can get from S to anywhere else. But this is the case of like maybe you can't get home. So, um, so maybe you <laughs> so you only care about in this case you only care about getting there and then you're going to be stuck there. Then then you I don't know. Um, so, so in this case, it's directed, so it's not guaranteed to connect it. It's, there's going to be an edge, but it may not be going the right way. So it's, okay. Um, we could just take the arrowheads off and make it undirected. It doesn't, okay, whatever. So, where is that? Yeah, no, it is undirected. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to start, I really want... Um, another color. Ah. I'm going to take this blue out. Okay, so this should work well. So we can get from S to S in time zero. Uh, yes, that's, the book is expensive, that's why um, it's not mandatory. Um, I forget how much I paid for it, like I bought mine in the 90s, so it's probably cheaper back then, but it was fairly expensive in the 90s. Um, uh, there are copies in the library, but yes, it's... it's um, for people who are going to keep taking algorithms, it's, an, it's a good investment. I mean, especially if you're going to end up teaching algorithms. Um, but uh, otherwise, mm, like, it's got way more material than, than the course, than the lecture notes, right? Because this is over a thousand pages, and the newer versions are probably longer, whereas the course notes are probably going to be like 200 pages. And a lot of that is just me rambling and, and um, not being really on topic. So if you, if you really want to know, get the book. But if, if you're not planning to take this any, any more algorithms courses, if you have a lot of money, then, then go for it. But, but okay, uh, Dijkstra's algorithm. So... You can, uh, you, can, uh, you can get from S to S in time zero. So what you're going to do at any point, uh, you want the invariant that you have, you have some vertices you can already, uh, you already know the distances to. And for all the vertices, Um, for all the vertices that are one step away from what you know the distances to, you have sort of candidate distances, right? Which is, for each of these, they're labeled with the small, the, um, 
So if, if you can get to this, this is a distance d1, and this is distance d2, and this is uh, c1, and this is c2, then this will be labeled with min of d1 plus c1 d2 plus c2. Okay. So it means that everything that's one step away from where you've currently got the distances to, you've sort of figured out how much it will cost you to get there in one more step. From, from the stuff that you can already, that you already know the distances to, how much does it cost you to get there in one step? What's the minimum? And the minimum to, and, right, and you're still considering the distance from S, so this is, this cost is this d1. And this cost is d2. So the cost of getting here is the minimum of getting to this and taking this step or getting to this and taking this step. Okay? So let's see how it works. Um, so you say s. So this is going to have cost 3. And this is going to have cost 5. Now, maybe 3. Maybe 5. OK? Now, of everything, once we've, once we've got these labeled, of everything we can get to in one step, we're going to choose the cheapest thing, and we're going to go there. And we're going to say, OK, is this 3? Yes, this is 3. So this is a zero. We really know that we can get from, from S to itself with, with cost zero and not less because there are no negative weight edges. In particular, no negative weight cycles. Okay, now from here, we look and we say, where can we get? Then this, we can get to, we can get from S when we, when we confirm that this, this distance is 3, then we look and we say, maybe we can get to this with cost 9. And this is still cost 5. Okay? So now, the, the, sort of the cheapest tentative cost is 5, so we're going to say, we're going to add this, and we're going to say, yes, this is really 5, and now, um, this is kind of boring, oh, this two, this edge goes the other way, and lots of stuff is working out to be the same. Uh, why did they do this example like that? Okay, so you say three. Let's make this edge three. Okay, we're just going to change this example. So we're going to make this this three so that it's a better example. This is dangerous, but and we're going to make this yes. Yes, we're going to make that. That's going to make things more interesting. Okay, so we were saying this is 3, and this, we could get here with cost 9, but now we can also get here with cost 8. Right? So it says, was it 9? Well, it was 9, but now maybe it's 8. And here, uh, we can get here with cost 11. So now that's everybody. So we, we have, um, we've, cons we've confirmed that these are the distances. These distances are confirmed. These are tentative. Now, of all the tentative di distances, the stuff at one step away from the stuff we confirmed, the cheapest distance is 8. So we say, okay, 8 is it's no longer tentative, it's confirmed. And now from 8, we look and we say, okay, where can we go from 8? We can go with cost 2 to here, so that makes this a 10. Okay, 
So the idea is um, you do this with a priority queue. And that means when you, when you confirm a vertex, so the priority queue is going to uh, contain all your tentative stuff. You're going to take the thing that, that has the minimum tentative cost, and then all of its neighbors, you're going to look at the... Uh, so when you, when you add somebody to... And you confirm, when you confirm somebody's cost, you're going to look at its neighbors, which some of them may have infinite cost, because there was no way to get there before. And some of them may have, so say this has cost 5, and this is 6, and this is a tentative cost of 10, then you say, well, I can get there with cost 11, but I could already find a cheaper way there. Also this, if this has cost 2, then now you say, okay, it has tentative cost 7, so you, you cross out the infinite. And maybe here, this is cost 3, and it was tentative cost 9, now it's tentative cost 8. So what you're doing is, for all of the vertices, you're checking, and it, these tentative costs are their priorities, the priorities in which, with which they're in the priority queue. If you can get, you, if you can decrease the tentative cost, then you change the priority. If it's, if it was infinite, it wasn't in the queue before, so now you, you assign it a priority and you put it in the queue. Okay? So, um, you see how to implement this with a priority queue, and I probably have like almost no time to teach the proof of correctness. I have four minutes. Okay, but that should be enough, um, because this is basically a greedy algorithm. Okay, how do we teach a greedy algorithm? Before we take any steps, we haven't made a mistake. So actually, um, when we label this with zero, okay, yeah, when we label this with zero, let's assume Mm, okay, before we label anything, before we confirm the, the distance to anything, um, we haven't mislabeled anything. We haven't, we haven't assigned any. Notice that when we assign a distance, we actually can get there with that distance. So the problem is really going to be, what if we assign something a distance and there's a cheaper way to get there? So... Um, so I'm, because, yeah, in the, in the book, this, this was a, a four, and so everything worked out, and it was boring. Okay. Um, why is this, so before we do anything, we're, we're fine. So let's just assume there's no negative weight cycle from S to itself. So, so then we're okay when we do S, and we say we can get from S, the minimum distance from S to S is zero. Because if there's something like a, a cycle with total, co with total cost negative one that goes from S to S, then actually it's undefined because you can just keep going around the cycle and the distance gets, the cost gets less and less. Okay. So that's a nasty case. You can't deal with negative weight edges, you just don't want to deal with negative weight cycles. Okay. Well, you can still work out the costs for the stuff that's not in a negative, that doesn't have a negative weight cycle on the way to it. Okay, next class. Um, let's assume, so this is the stuff we've confirmed. So before we take any steps, or even when we label this with zero, let's assume that's okay, because there are no negative weight cycles. Okay. Let's suppose that up to step i, we haven't made any mistakes. So this means that we've labeled with distances a number of vertices. It could be using this picture. I could use this. Yeah, no, I'm going to redraw that. Um, OK, so now um, let's consider that this 
is the cheapest vertex that we can reach. So this is S, and we have some confirmed cost here, which is D1, say, so this is distance 1, and the cost of this edge is C1, and we say, okay, of all of the things that we can reach from one step, from this piece that where we've confirmed the, the, the costs, this is the cheapest. And so our algorithm labels it with D1 plus C1. Okay, so here I, I'm saying like if the minimum it, if the minimum of all of the ways to reach this from this in one step is D1 plus C1, we label it with that. Okay, so why is that not a mistake? This is a little bit different than um, than the degree. It's a little bit different than the greedy proofs we've seen before, but it's basically the same. Perhaps there is a difference between our solution and the opt if there are two edges from one node with the same weight. Yes. Um, so it could be that d2 plus c2 is equal to d1 plus c1. But the thing is. I actually still have a few minutes. I have three minutes. That should be enough. Um, we're not actually, when I said the, we're, we're still getting a spanning tree, we actually don't, don't need the tree, um, particularly. We just want the distances at the moment. Because if we get a tree, if the distances are correct and we have a tree that realizes those distances, it doesn't matter. Like, that's fine for our purposes. Um, uh, we get the, the cheapest, it doesn't matter if it's unique, okay? So, I'm just going to claim that if we label it with this, with this distance, we are okay that later on it can't turn out that there is, uh, there is a way to get there that's cheaper than D1 plus C1. And, okay, well, suppose there were a way to get there that's cheaper. Well, that way at some point would have to leave this um, set of correctly labeled vertices. And it would have to, so it would leave, and then there would be a path, and so a directed path. This shouldn't be a wavy line, this should be... So it has to leave. Maybe this arrow goes directly here, or maybe there's some, some section of this path that is outside the stuff we've already labeled. But you see that there has to, if this, if there's a cheaper way to get there, it ha there, if there's a cheaper path, it has to start at S and leave this and get there another way. But, the thing is, that means that the cost here is something like D2, and this is something like C2. So this is why it's a little bit different here. So the cost here is D2 plus C2, and by the way we're choosing, we've ordered these vertices, we're, by the order in which we're considering these vertices, D2 plus C2 is greater than or equal to D1 plus C1. Because if it weren't, we would be labeling this before this, okay? But that means that as long as this path doesn't have a negative cost, going from S, going to this with cost D2, and then taking this, that's already used up the same as the cost of going from, here to, from S to here and from here to here. So the only way this is a mistake is if this path contains negative weight edges. And we assume there are no negative weight edges, so Dijkstra's algorithm is correct. If there are negative weight edges, Dijkstra's algorithm breaks. You can find cases in which it doesn't return the correct answer. And I am one minute over time, so we're going to assume everybody understood that, and if not, eventually, when I get caught up with the lecture notes, there